Hey, good morning, everyone. Happy Friday. Hope you have some huge, huge, fantastic plans this weekend. Stay warm. Uh, some of us are chilly. Stay warm. Okay, so um, here we are. Good morning, everybody. J.W. Dick. Hi, Julie. Chip. Alan. John. Joe. Thanks for being here, everyone. Uh, sorry, that's all the names I can see uh, in the chat here. So thanks a bunch for being here. Um, Apple. Apple. <laughs> Apple reported yesterday. Looks like it had uh, good news. At least the market thought it was good news. Uh, popped up a little bit here. And uh, let's see what happens right in this area. See if we, let's see if that uh, trendicator backs it down or if we blow through that trendicator and set up for a long trade. So I'm certainly going to be watching that one for sure. Um, what else was there? Yeah, that's okay. Let's just take a look at some charts here. Oh, I do want to mention this. Uh, let me turn, let's go here and let me turn this real time off. There we go. So here's the SPY and I want to go back to this candle right here, the 24th. And uh, we'll put a little line right there. Uh, that's the 24th this month, just a few days ago. If we can hold these lows, not a very good line, is it? Um, if we can hold, there we go. If we can hold these lows with the SPY and the Qs, we'll go look at the Qs in a sec. If we can hold those, um, I think the buyers might have a fighting chance for a really relief rally. So that's what we need to see happen. Now, today we may yet just kind of you know, do what we've been doing in here, back and forth, back and forth. Uh, teasing everybody, putting everybody on edge. Some traders, some traders, mostly day traders, are rocking. So way to go, uh, those that do that. Um, but I do think that if we can hold this bottom, we might have something going on, uh, relief rally-wise. Uh, the Q's same way. Uh, if we can hold down here, whatever that is. Let's see, the low is 334.15 on January 24th. If we can hold that, then again, I think the we'd stand a really good chance of a relief rally. Now, the big thing for me is a re relief rally is all fine and dandy. Uh, I use the trend indicator here. So what I'm going to need to see before I could be um, really good and bullish uh, is, is to break out of these red dots turn green and give us a little test in here and then maybe a bullish something like that and what that will do is that will give us that chart pattern right there that we're looking for and that's the same true uh, the same thing with the spies as well there so okay today's Friday I want to take a different look at charts um, these charts believe me they're not at all uh, hot charts and you know, let's just get all kinds of crazy and buy them today. But what I want to do is talk about the inverse ETFs. Yesterday and even the day before, we had a little chat about that. I've had a lot of people ask me about that. And I must say, years ago, a lot of years ago, um, there was somebody, I'm afraid I don't remember their name, they turned me on to the inverse ETFs because way back then, I never shorted. So there was times where... I was always trying to be in a long trade going against the market. And there was somebody, um, that's when we had TC2000 chat and, and somebody in TC2000 chat, they said, hey, you should check out this ETF, inverse ETF. So I did. Um, I went and learned about a few of them, just basically read about them, what they were and everything. And it really is a cool way uh, to make trades if the market's moving down, if you don't short. Some accounts can't short, uh, just for whatever reason. And and they're a good mix with your shorts that you're doing. And it's charts like uh, TZA. Now, I strongly urge everyone that, if you're interested in this, um, to spend some time this weekend, or any day for that matter, and do a little research and what does... TZA represent as far as the chart. You know, what is a three times um, uh, 
inverse ETA. It, it, this is important stuff to go learn about, to go Google it, take that time. Uh, it's not long, uh, but, but it, there is some really great education out there that uh, is worthwhile. And really what I want to do today is twofold, share some of these charts with you, and then let's just take a look at them. How could we have been in them? How could anyone uh, have traded some of them? And if you look right in here, it's the same chart patterns that we always look for. And, I mean, we're crossing the trendicator. You know, if you don't mind buying under the 50, there's a lot of reasons why people might, might or might not buy here. Um, there's a lot of reasons why people might or might not buy here. Um, my, Dean, Fred, Nancy, good morning. They all might, you know, have some particular chart pattern. Um, and that's fine. And that's, you know, what you have to develop. But the chart is still a chart. A chart is a chart is a chart. It doesn't matter if you're looking at TZA or if you're looking at General Motors. It, it's a chart. So, yeah, I'm going to, we're going to look at this recent swing. This was a pretty nice little swing here. And you can see where we've got not really a double bottom, but a good double bottom based on the fact we had this nice candle right in there. And then, we had a little uh, morning star. So you're still looking at candlestick signals. You're still looking at price action. And here we had some follow through above the trendicator. And here we had some follow through above that bullish candle. And if you look right in here, look at this beautiful 3H trap all right there. That could have been traded. The truth is, each time it opened up down here, in the 3 h trap, it could have been traded. Um, let's see, yesterday, I don't know, what, I get my days mixed up here. What is today? Okay, this is yesterday. Here's two days ago, so Thursday, Wednesday. Wednesday, that certainly could have been traded. For those that are doji buyers, you could have bought that right there. But you see how that chart just works? Really a cool little um, set of ticker symbols to have on the sidelines. Um, there's lots and lots and lots of ETFs. I certainly don't look at all of them. Um, I want the ones that mean the most to me. And here's a short list of, of a few that I particularly like. Um, let's take a look at um, SQQQ. So if somebody was to say, okay, SQQ is a buy here and I mean, I get it. If you want to buy it down here, it makes sense. Just take a look at what this chart has done. And, you know, take the next week. If you don't follow these, take the next week and just watch them. Watch what they do. And you'll, you'll see that they're just like a chart. They're nothing to be afraid of. Um, they're nothing to be scared about. It's just a chart. In fact, I could take off this, uh, this watermark of the ticker symbol right here, and you would never know it. Yeah, you could peek up here if you wanted, but you would never know it. So, say the market starts to get bullish here. Say the Qs, the Qs start to get bullish. Well, what's going to happen is SQQQ is going to start coming down. So, this might be a case because what we always look for is a chart that rallies and then pulls back, right? So here's the rally. So we're going to watch for that pullback. Because just because the market starts to rally doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be bullish for goodness knows, now knows how long. So we could get a, a, um, another chance. I, I don't think right now is the best best time to buy these inverse ETS because I I do think if the market holds um, those those uh, what is it the 24th lows then I do think we're going to get a re relief rally and what's going to happen are these inverse ETFs are going to drop down now if the market is turned away at some point as it moves higher you know, the relief rally doesn't turn into a good old-fashioned bullish rally, then what will happen is the buyers will start coming back in. You see how this start this chart pattern is starting to form up here? It's just a chart. 
Anyway, I just thought today this would be a nice uh, little thing to look at. Um, here is SPXU. That's basically shorting the uh, uh, this S the S and P 500, but you're going long this chart right here. There's another huge benefit of of these stocks is that um, they're not as expensive as, say, IWM or the Qs. I mean, you can look right here and you can see that we're, where's my, there it is. You can see that we're sitting at $16.40 here. So they're not quite as expensive and they become a little more affordable for anyone that can't, say, short the Qs or short the SPY, things like that. Um, you can see here, look, look at the chart pattern this built. Absolutely beautiful. And let's, you know, let's, uh, here, let's put that downtrend line on there, just like you would a chart. We created a little bit of a bottom here. We rallied up. We didn't quite break through that downtrend line. A breakthrough to me is a close, not just a little peak up there. And then down we go. Look at the morning star formed right in here. And now we're above that downtrend line. Now this becomes tradable, and this could have been bought right in there. This could have been bought. This could have been bought. This could have been bought. Uh, this could have been bought as well. Uh, you know, if you were into buying that gap, I don't think, I don't think that would have been too wise, just because we're pushing up against the 200 here. You can see how we've kind of settled down, actually into a buy, uh, a buy pocket here. Um, the only reason I'm not jumping up and down to buy something like this right now is I do believe that if the market holds that that January 24th low we have a chance for those buyers to come back up and push the sellers out for a little while and again that's going to drive these stocks down a little bit and that might set them up if the relief rally fails in the market then it will allow these to start coming back up. Um, SDOW, that's same thing as shorting the S&P 500. Here's SDS, it's the same thing as shorting the S&P 500. Here's DXD, this is, um, you're going long, in all these you're going long, and what you're doing is you're shorting the market. Good morning, Tom. Good morning, Paula. You're going, you're shorting the market. So instead of shorting, say, the diamonds, which somebody might not be able to afford, that's one reason to maybe look at these. Um, and maybe, again, some people don't like to short for whatever reason, or you can't short, doesn't matter why. Here is another tool that you could uh, trade with. You look how we've rallied up, we've pulled back, we're right in the buy pocket. Beautiful looking chart. Again, um, these are ready to go if the market starts to fail, for sure. I just don't know that the market actually going to fail from here. And I'm watching those January 24th lows. So Anyway, DXD is one. Here's dust. Here's dust right here. Um, you're looking at the uh, gold miners uh, bear uh, ETF. That's one that uh, I like to look at. And you can see where we're putting kind of a, a top right in here. You can see that if this was start to break out, let's do this. If we were to, well, we'll let's say get up in this area right here. And now let's go just go to a three-day chart just to get a big picture of the chart. Look at the upside potential. Look at that up. That's insane. The upside potential, if if this chart started to work, okay? I mean, if the market was to get, you know, if, if goal was to get um, super bearish, which I'm not suggesting it is at all. I'm just saying if it did, this might be a chart that, that uh, instead of picking one chart out, this might be a chart we look at um, on the long side. Let's get rid of that. Um, RWM. A lot of people love this one here. Uh, it goes along with TZA, shorting the uh, IWM. So what you're doing is you're going long this chart, which is in turn shorting the 
IWM, the Russell. And uh, so let's take a look at it. And you can see here that just like any chart we might look at, um, in this case, we have what I see is a uh, little bit of what I'm going to call a handle. And then I'm going to come down here and do this. So now we have what I'm going to call a scoop pattern pattern. And then let's change this up a little bit. Let's go from this low. Uh, any one of those highs would work. High, we go to a lower high. And look how that thing started to take off. So it's the same chart patterns using the trendicator here. Here's a, here's what I call a, a, it's in the Morningstar family. It's just two dojis down here instead of one. Still in the Morningstar family. Man, look at that. Morningstar. Look at the buying opportunity. But, and that could have been bought too. Uh, but look at that three, uh, I'm sorry, that bar in the trap right here. T-line, we're coming up over the 200 period moving average. The trendicator is turning uh, green. What a beautiful, beautiful chart. Um, uh, possible buy, possible buy, possible buy here, possible buy here. And here we are now approaching uh, the dotted deuce up here. This would have been a fantastic rounded bottom breakout. So anyway, um, we'll le kind of leave it there. I, I just wanted to share that today with everybody. I, You know, it's all nice to put out some what you think might be hot stocks and everything, but the market has been so choppy later, lately. That's really is hard to do. We do have a running watch list, and if you watch, um, you know, if you watch this, um, um, you know, write these stocks down, put them on your watch list if you want to, uh, to start building a watch list so you can keep track of when stocks uh, start moving. So, hey, everyone, thank you so very much. I appreciate you being here. I'll be back in about, uh, oh, what is it, 20 minutes now, and uh, the market will open up about then. Thanks. You guys all have a great weekend coming up, okay?